let us join our voices to yes. tell of the wondrous works of Yah our Creator. And sing the song of Thy wondrous works will tell, found on page 10 in our song, in our Sidori, that is. The heavens declare it. him. He continues to extend his mercy towards each and every one of us. This time I would like to call upon Mori Yaya to read for us the 79th Psalm. We're going to ask Ak Kananiel to read the 121st Psalm. Ariel Bat Mori Aviel Toda Bat Mori Yaya to read for us the 124th Psalm. And we're going to ask mm -hmm. Todaya to read for us the 148 song. Hallelujah. Let us all pray. Hallelujah. I don't know if I need the mic, but Carol's uh, <laughs> Balls would like to give thanks and praises, honor, respect, loyalty, fair allegiance to the true living power. Hold on. Even the power of our forefathers, Abraham, is God who is right. It is. It is. 
thank you for allowing me and my family to get here in safety, allowing allow for you all to get here in safety. And um, uh, I invited brother out here, brother Johnny. He said he enjoyed himself and he'll be no, back. So I'd like to thank you all for that. Uh, uh, Seventy nine song. O oh God, the heathen are coming to thine inheritance. They have defiled thy holy temple. They have made Jerusalem into heat. They have given the dead bodies of thy servants to be food unto the fowls of the heavens, the flesh of thy holy ones unto the beasts of the earth. They have shed their blood like water round about Jerusalem with nothing to bury them. We are become a taunt to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. Our Lord, O Yah, will not be angry forever. How long will thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the nations that know thee not, and upon the kingdoms that call not upon thy name. For they have devoured Yahweh and laid waste his habitation. Remember not against us the iniquities of our forefathers. Let thy compassion speedily come to meet us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O Yah, now of our salvation, for the sake of the glory of thy name, deliver us and forgive our sins for thy name's sake. Wherefore should the nations say, Where is their power? Let the avenging of thy servant's blood that is shed be made known among the nations in our sight. Let the groaning of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, set be those that are appointed to death. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach wherewith they have reproached thee, O Yah. That are thy people in the flock of thy pastor will give thee thanks forever. We will tell of thy praise to all generations. Amen. 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 Just giving thanks and praise to the Most High God, even again for even allowing me to, uh, you know, the opportunity to give praises to His name in the Amen. sanctuary and in the congregation. Yes. And um, that we would all uh, be an example to anybody that we come in contact with Amen. Uh, for righteousness. And for an example, that would be something that would be positive and not negative because there's a lot of negativity going on out here. Mm -hmm. And it's not only hard for, for you know, the youth, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult for the adults as well because we have people yes, true. whose minds are gone, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I think I thank the Most High God for it's this word called seconds, you know? So to be cerebral, a thinker, you know what I mean? So we can think for ourselves so that we know and acknowledge the true and living power. Hallelujah. 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 Let us welcome our Kananiel to read the 121st song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, Nicole. Shabbat Shalom, Nicole. Thanks, praise the Lord of Israel. Amen. Continue mercies. Continue protection, guidance. I said, well, he continue to bless all of us with the understanding to look unto him for our help, our strength, and our everything. The one of the twenty first song. I will lift up mine eyes unto the mountains, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from Jehovah, who made heaven and earth. You will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel doth neither slumber nor sleep. Jehovah is thy keeper, Jehovah is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Jehovah shall keep thee from all evil, he shall keep thy soul. Jehovah shall guard thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forever. Yeah. Yeah. In these words, you can see the Most High, He protects us from evil, He protects our going in and our coming out. Amen. It's nothing else or no one else that we should look upon for this. As most of you blessed today to soon come that all Israel will understand. This is all the people of the earth will understand that He is our everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us welcome Aviel, Sleep Abat Moriyaya, to read for us the 124th Psalm. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. A psalm, a psalm of ascent. Of David. If it had not been Yehoah who was for us, let Israel now say. If it had not been Yehoah who was for us, 
when men rose up against us. Then they have swallowed up has swallowed us up alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our souls. Then the proud waters had gone over our souls. Blessed be Jehovah, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of Jehovah, who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to thank you, Hoa, for me being alive right. this day and for me to see everybody in the temple okay. and that they're alive and breathing and functioning right. right. And yeah. tell you, Hoa, for our food, I want right. to <laughs> Wow, this is the first time I really heard her speak. <laughs> she just sits there quiet. Great job. Y'all <laughs> waiting for an opportunity to praise the Creator's name. Let us welcome uh, our sister Koto Daya to read for us the 148 Psalms. <laughs> All praises to the most high. Oh, I am glad to be here. It's my fading. I'm always nervous when I stand up. <laughs> um, it's good to see everybody. I'm glad to be here. It's a blessing. This day is awesome, and I'm coming out and praising with you all. Okay. Praise the Jehovah from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that are above the heavens. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens. Let them praise the name of Jehovah, for he commanded, and they were created. He has also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which shall not be transgressed. Praise Jehovah from the earth, ye sea monsters, and all of thee. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his words. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged fowl. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth. Both young men, maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name is alone. For his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. And he has lifted up a horn for his people, a praise for all his holy ones, even for the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving thanks to all of the psalmists, thanking God for each and every one of your lives for the words that he placed in your mouth to just praise his name, to motivate each and every one of us and give us a greater desire to love, appreciate, praise, and serve him. Because hearing words from one another is what lifts us all up. Thanking y'all for your words and the energy that you all bring here to move and inspire even those of us who teach and speak from here to do what we do in praising and glorifying the creator's name. This time I would like to call upon Maurice Shimuel, who would from his seat, or, or is it going to be Mishare, who's going to, on behalf of our Code Kenya, or our Code Kenya, give us the word of the day. Word of the day. And then yes. I understand they're going to give us sort of like a summary of all the words um, that's been given throughout this time frame. You want to come up? Oh, or, she doesn't know Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom lechem. Shabbat shalom lecha. All right, so we're going to have a review. Gavert uh, Kenya and uh, um, her husband are in uh, New York with the uh, event that's going on there. So she wanted to do a recap from supine all the way to our new current word. So with the help of uh, Moray, we'll just go ahead and do a quick recap. So supine is a person laying face upward. Like when you wake up in your bed. Uh, Kia, you have this because I don't understand also. Uh, next, is it yeah. next shop I suppose? It's going to be like a blockbuster. A blockbuster, get your pen and your paper. So if you haven't got it, this is your chance to get all those words down. Look, the sisters are working on that side. I think they're, they're fidgeting around. Somebody's doing something. Snap the picture. If you can't write it down. Uh, Tom Chief, a blockbuster. Supine. 
Cantankerous. Supine cantankerous. Cantankerous is what? Having a bad temper, argumentative, uncooperative. You don't get along. Supine, cantankerous, acrimony, bitterness, or ill feeling. So we got supine, we have cantankerous. Laying on, laying face up, cantankerous, being argumentative, acrimony is be, is being bitter or feeling bad. Fugacious. Fugacious. Tending to disappear, like fugitive, right? Tending to uh, disappear or fleeting. Okay. Bring it together like that, Rashad. Don't give them no hints. That's old. That's old. <laughs> Uh, queen was in there before. No, right. Nefarious. 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 All right. So what were our words up to this point? We had supine. Cantankerous. Cantankerous. Acrimony. Acrimony. Fugacious. Fugi fugacious. Nefarious. Nefarious. A lot of these are negative things, I guess, in this run. <laughs> Typical of a... Nefarious is typical of a criminal or wicked person, okay? Like a nefarious plot or scheme to get over on people. Flummoxed is bewildered, perplexed. I don't know what to do, okay? So we had fugacious. What was the next one? Cantankerous. No, before, no, after fugacious. fugacious. Oh. Nefarious. 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 Then flummoxed. This is, a, how you, this is how I learn lists of words. You go back and you... Force yourself to remember what you learned as you go. So you don't have to cram. Tacit. Tacit is understood or implied without being stated. For example, if I do this, I'm looking at my son and he knows this or this. The whole room doesn't need to know. I just say, don't you do it again. That's tacit. Okay? Then the next one? Insouciant. Insouciant is showing casual lack of concern, indifference. I don't care. I'm in sushi. Okay. So, what was the word before tacit? Flummoxed. Flummoxed. Before flummoxed. Before nefarious. Fugacious. Before that. Acrimony. Before acrimony. Cantankerous. Cantankerous. Before cantankerous. Supine. Yeah. Supine. Laying on your side. Corpulent. We're gonna have a standoff with the two of you. Corpulent, a corpse is a what? It's a body, a dead body, so having a pretty big body is being corpulent, or fat. Pulchritude. Pulchritude. Pulchritude in this, I think we all remembered all those great fashion models. <laughs> that was beauty, right? Yes. Beauty. Pulchritudinous, I don't know if that's a separate word, but it's beautiful. So in case she counts that as two. Pulchritude and pulchritudinous. Beauty and beautiful. One is a noun, one's an adjective. Okay? Lugubrious. Lugubrious or lugubrious is sounding or looking sad or dismal. Okay? So now these, these are... Mouthful words. Let's go back to tacit. What came after tacit? Insouciant. Insouciant, which was, I don't care. Yeah, sure. Then after that? Corpulent. Yeah, Corpulent. Having yeah. a big body. Yeah. Then what? Pulchritude. Having a beautiful body. <laughs> right? And then being lugubrious, you're being sad or dismal about being called uh, corpulent. Right? <laughs> how you how you study this? Right? Um, compunction. Now is this the newest word? This is our newest word. No, this is last week. That's, this, this is, is last, last week. One, yes. Last week. Okay, the last word was compunction. A deep feeling of guilt or sorrow or uh, having a moral scruple that prevents uh, or it follows doing something bad. So in other words, I feel bad about it, but I'm stealing something. Right? Or I feel bad about it after the fact. So that's having compunction. You feel bad in your ruach about what you did. All right. So this catches us all up. Any questions? Good. 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 Good.
No, there's no word for this week. We just um, did a recap on all of the words oh, and so that you can, everyone can, all teams can be prepared. You can't say that you didn't have the word or you forgot something. Take your notes and go home and get ready for the, the final session, which is going to be next week. Okay. And we're going to have a standoff amongst the brothers between you, Lafteli, and, and, and um, Malakia, because you seem to be pretty sharp there. Uh, Yaka, if you all would, do y'all the honor of standing and let us sing the song Jerusalem before calling up our, our song. <laughs> no, Jerusalem. Jerusalem on page two in our song book. By the rivers of Babylon, yeah, we sat down and we cried. When we remember the ruins and we were sick, not dead inside. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thank you. 
This afternoon, the head of this community, the leader, chief brother, chief man, the star of the Bible, the star of our own. Hallelujah! 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 So we got a wise guy up here. Please be seated. Give me all thanks, honor, and glory to the creator of heaven and earth for my life. For the lives of all of you. I was actually trying to find something for us to do today. I have a few things in mind, but I don't know how much we'll have time to cover. Is everyone having a blessed week? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on. We're going to start. I'm going to make a couple of announcements. Let me do that first. Okay, these are simple things. If you haven't noticed, the sheds have been moved to the back. We're trying to get us, we're trying to get us in a position to... Got us a classroom on the side there, you know. As you all can see, we're working diligently. 
Everybody has a role to play. You know what yours is. Help us out. We want to get it done. We're not playing around. We want to get it in before the summer. So whatever you can do to help us get it done, uh, as you can see, we're moving fast because we, we don't like stagnation. So please uh, just keep us in mind. Um, secondly, there may be a new moon sighting today. We're still waiting for the final word to come in. So if we do get this, get this sighting uh, confirmed, we'll have a new moon service and we'll be celebrating our new year. If it doesn't come in this evening and tomorrow by default, it's definitely the new month of Abib and, uh, and it's our new year. So uh, happy new year, you away, Kodesh Tov. Coming in sooner or later. The last thing, this is just for uh, uh, FYI. We have purchased a, uh, a blood pressure apparatus. Wow. So if our elders or anybody here needs to have their blood pressure checked, we have a simple one that goes on the wrist. Anybody can use. The other one takes the pump and all of that and the valve and all. We don't need all. We have two now. So we have one for our nurse, nurses, and we have one for, uh, for the layman. You just put it on the wrist and read the instructions. They're in the office. And uh, someone will go in there and get it, and we can make sure that our elders and uh, anyone else stays healthy. Okay? Just so you know, I don't want that to not be known. Uh, we do need another bottle of Tylenol. The other one is expired. And we, some people have headaches every now and then. So if somebody wants to donate a bottle of Tylenol, just let us know so everybody doesn't come in next week with a bottle of Tylenol, okay? <laughs> Right, so just make it known if you're going to take care of that for us, we appreciate it. Okay, that's it for the housekeeping stuff, and now we're going to open up the floor for a uh, question and answer period. Anyone can ask a question, anyone can answer a question. We're going to ask in the event of a controversy that the final decision will rest up here. Not because we know more, because we want to maintain order in the house of Yah. You all know how we do this. So the question and answer period is now open. Ima Muzara. This question was this question was posed to me, so I'm giving it to you guys. Um, the question was asked um, if a loved one passes and they are cremated, and and the urn is placed in the home. Is the home unclean and does that make anyone that comes in and out of the home unclean? Uh, good question. You have an answer? Do you have the answer to the question? I, I, I'll guess. Okay, we'll, have your, we'll take your, your guess. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, you can pass the mic to her for Martin Shah. Listen, everybody stand up for the elders. All right? Zehu, hold on five. You don't have to stand up every time one of them stands up, okay? Shabbat shalom, my coach. Now, I don't know if this is right. This is just my feelings. I don't think that it can make everyone in the house unclean because I think the person have to die in the house and then you go into the house and then you it'll make you unclean but I wouldn't want to have ashes around because you know that person's dead you know and I, I think that if the ashes get on you you can be unclean I, I'm not sure but I think if you know somebody knock them over you know by accident when you sleep I think that can make you unclean I wouldn't advise nobody to keep up, up the ashes or anything. Okay, appreciate your answer. Anyone else? Okay. Um, this is what I would say. Oh, and Neem, we're not touching this one. Um, yeah, yeah, just want to hear what I have to say first. Uh, the urn is unclean. Uh, of course, the ashes are unclean. I would even say the mantle that it's on or wherever you place it is unclean. Uh, but anything outside of that is not unclean. Anyone that touches it is unclean. But that would consist of a grave or a grave. The whole house is not a grave. But the urn is a grave. 
and anything the urn touches is considered unclean. So um, that would consist of uh, people do it. Um, I would say if someone wants to be um, cremated, then they should remove the ashes, spread them, or even intern the ashes. You can actually put the urn into a mausoleum, a mausoleum, 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 or a grave. And, and that way, you know, they, you've uh, met with their wishes, but you've put the dead out of your sight. Okay? That's what I would say. I'll take your hand in the back. Um, actually, I'm going to extend that. Um, I know that the Lord has a deceased relative in their home on a mantle. Mm -hmm. So the Hebrew family member is doesn't feel they can no longer go there because they would be unclean in the house. And I feel that uh, they want clarification from the Kohanim so they'll know whether or not they can go to this family member's home without being unclean. I'll just answer the question. Questions answered. Sweka, that's it. You want to add to that? So, no, you're right. That is absolutely correct. And it goes. The thought goes back to a few a, a, a graveyard, just as he mentioned. And and you would you would base a how whether you're unclean or not based on how close you are to that to that uh, grave, to that uh, tombstone, or what have you. There are some uh, churches that have the graveyard is right there, the road is right here, and everything. So you have to ask yourself, am I on a road right there? Am I unclean? You have to just base it, you have to decide or determine based on how close you are to that object. But none of us should be putting anything like that in our homes, I would think. Okay. Okay. Questions answered. Uh, next question. Uh, I'll take uh, Aki and Yahoo. I see your hand in the back. Raise your hands high enough that I can see them, please, because I'm, I'm having trouble with um, just dealing with the portion today, um, dealing with um, Zerat, kind of talked to Michelle a little bit about it uh, during the break. Um, just wanted some more insight in regards to, um, not Zerat alone, but I can understand like um, the scab like on, on your body and things of that nature, but when it goes on to say that it's something that's in a garment and it could spread in a garment, um, just not clear. Is it something that's alive, that's spreading, that's causing it? Fungus. So, it's a fungus. Fungus will feed off of anything that it can feed off of. Uh, I actually had a leather jacket. Mm -hmm. And I loved it, that leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to just, I had to throw it out. Because it can, it'll contaminate the rest of my clothes. So I have to cut that. It's, it, a fungus can grow on anything that it feeds off of. So if it feeds off of it, yeah, it, it, it's going to spread. It can spread. I mean, it's like anything else. The disease eats up whatever it is that feeds it. Like fire. Okay? Does that answer your question? Avisha I? And any other hands? Raise them again so I can know who's next. Okay. Ima Vishona and um, Aktaya. Um, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Are you doing what's going on? Because you may cover it in that um, segment. If not, I'm going to ask a question. I am doing what's going on. Okay. So but I'm if it's not in there, do you, so you want to ask the question, you want to wait for it? Okay, wait for it. I'll ask it then. Um, okay. How should I put it? <clears throat> There's two questions. The first one is, what do I look for if I'm taking a lift? Oh, that's or, in there. Okay. Uber. Okay, yeah. Let me cover it in. Yeah, I'll cover you it in. Cover in there? Yeah. Okay. And the second one, if not, you can bring it up there. Okay. Uh, the second one is okay. if I get a flat tire in a street, how do I, what do I need to do in order not to get hit by a car? Because somebody else just got killed. Hmm. Um, they broke down and they was dealing with their tire or dealing with the car. They turned around and they got hit by a car. Uh, any type of road hazard is a danger because, not even because you're not doing something right, 
is because people driving are not paying attention. Either they're not paying attention or they're intoxicated. And that's when most of those things happen. They text it and they look up, they swerved, and you just happen to be there. Or whoever just happens to be in the wrong. So if you swerve off the road, just a fraction, that's a dead, you know, the person is sitting there changing the tire, that's dangerous. My suggestion is number one, if, if, if you're in a situation where you can get off the road, off the main road, and change that tire, you do that. If you're on a highway and it's, you don't feel you can safely get to the next exit to get off of there, um, I would put on my flashers. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, I would suggest this to you. Get AAA. Okay. AAA will change a tire for you. It's not that expensive. It's a yearly fee. And that'll take care of any problems you have with your car. That'll even take care of towing um, for so many miles. Um, my family, Maisha and I, we've had AAA Plus for years. That's the gold card. And that gives you up to 100 miles of towing. Um, it's not that expensive. So you're telling me before I get to the problem, in other words, you can avoid that problem in a lot of ways by doing certain things. If you don't have AAA then, and you can't get off the road, then you need to have, um, what do you call them? A lot of people don't have flares. Have flares for your car. If you don't want to pay for AAA, pay for flares. Put the flares up, put on your flashing lights, and I would even call 911 and say, can you send a police car here to stand behind my car while I change my tire? They'll do that. You tell them what your, what your, what your mile marker, what mile marker you're near, or what, what, between what road you're on, and try to get assistance. I would not, especially at night. Mm -hmm. Daytime is bad enough, but especially at night. I would not change a tire out there uh, without some type of protection. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much it. Try to get it in your budget. Get regular AAA. You'll still get towed for 10 miles, 12 miles, or whatever. You may only need just to get off the road. Just so you could, but AAA will fix your tire for you. Uh, so those are the types of things you do because you never know when that's going to happen. Uh, and you know, a lot of people <clears throat> ride around with a flat tire. I'll fix that flat tire tomorrow. I'll fix that, fix that flat tire tomorrow, and they never fix the flat tire. And then when they look around, they got another flat tire. And now you can't even change your tire. These are things that you can avoid just by being vigilant about your own safety and about how you take care of your car. And some people like to ride around, I don't want to drag this out, but I know people ride around with slow leaks all the time. They just keep going back to the gas station and putting there and they know they got a slow leak. Yeah, well, I mean, I got one of those, but I don't carry it around with me. I use it at my house if I have a slow leak and I can do, but the thing is, is that don't, this is, this is why, the Creator gives us wisdom. When we put all of these things off, we don't realize that we're setting ourselves up for more problems. So the person that didn't have the spare tire because they failed to fix the old tire, whatever the case might be, gonna find themselves in that type of predicament, and God forbid, that's when they're gonna end up in, in a bad situation, or even worse situation. We have to really be vigilant about handling our business. That's, I'm going to put it as simple as that. It's a general statement, meaning the things that we can do to keep ourselves safe, to keep ourselves uh, uh, from being inconvenienced, if that's the least of it, is to take care of our business when we have the time and the chance and make life simple for all of us. Because sometimes we make these mistakes, but innocent people like our children have to pay the price for it. So let's just be, let's just be smart, okay? That's all I have to say about that. Uh, Amy Vishona, and the other hand was Akhtaya. Shabbat shalom. Um, I've lived in the tropics during the rainy season, and um, a lot of times, even here, you get like mildew in your home. Now, I wanted to know if that can turn to leprosy, like in the corners, mm. like in the ceiling, and in the, you know. That's mold. Yeah, I know. I mean mold. Mold is a fungus. Can it? Can you? Can mold or fungus turn to le a leprosy? I don't That's know. My it's a separate fungus. It's not the same as leprosy, but it is a fungus. It's another fungus. What I would say to you is, um, 
mold is usually from uh, moisture. Uh, no, yeah. it's, it, that's what it comes from. It's a fungus. It, and it also can be airborne. It's very easily airborne. People get very sick from it, especially if they're sensitive to it. Um, it's not, it's not, it's a different fungus, but it is a fungus. So um, you would, um, first thing you could do is spray it with bleach, full strength, and usually that might kill it. But if it's, if it's, what happens is, usually mold starts from inside the walls. It's not just on the surface, it's, it's gotten into the walls and once that happens, it's growing in there, you don't even know it, and then it might surface at some point in time. And sometimes you have to take out the whole wall, you have to make, take other measures, but it's very, very similar, but not the same thing, I don't believe, as, uh, as leprosy. But it is a fungus that lives off of uh, anything. Um, my question was, could it turn to leprosy? I don't think it could turn into leprosy, but hold on, I'm not a genius, hold on. Let's talk to a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so folks are pointing to my direction because I pointed, I pointed out um, even to the Yaladim, Sara'at is more, if you think of the word outbreak, that's more a catch all. Because leprosy is one thing, like getting a cold is different than the flu in English. But it's more like the word outbreak, right? And the t you tend to see the same two or three things that a Kohen, a Kohen is looking for, whether it's in a person or in a building or in an object. Um, and that's, is it below the surface, like uh, Sar said, is it below the surface? Is it raw? Is it like basically peeling off the stuff that made up the surface? Mm -hmm. And is there, um, if you came back to it week after week, it's growing. Like if you kind of took a marker around it, came back after seven days, nobody was in that room, and it's growing past that mark, then you know you have something that's malignant. Uh, it's an outbreak. It's something that can harm you um, because it, it can eat into that kind of surface. It'll e easily eat into you, um, and that is where people. And that's where he talks about: is it deep red? Is it a deep green color? Um, in the in the portion, even those are the ones that you have to watch out the most. Um, some are black. Some are different kind of shades. But those are the kinds of trends that you're looking for in it. Uh, something that you would have to either destroy or you sometimes see contractors will chisel out, and it says in the Torah, chisel out that brick or that section of the wall, take it out and see if that is still there. If it's still there, you have to destroy whatever part of building that is. And that would be a tzara'at. Okay, Torah. I just want to let you know, if, I don't know if you all remember that there was a, that wall was scraped over there. It was scraped because um, we had noticed that the wall was peeling. The paint was peeling, so I knew there had to be moisture or something in there. So I went and I scraped that wall, and then I scraped it down here, which was peeling. A lot of you may not have noticed it, but um, that nobody saw because it was done during the week. But um, that wall was scraped, and then uh, I primed it, and then I painted it to make sure that if there is something going on, we'll find out soon enough. But we know that, um, just so you all know this, this brought it up, but um, we have a leak on our roof now. You notice that uh, tile out there is getting full of water when it rains. We have a couple of leaks on the roof. We're trying to get them fixed. Um, and again, we have to get that taken care of. Uh, sublim subliminal messages. And um, we have to take care of that. But that can cause mold and all of that type of stuff, right. fungus. Right. And that's why we want to get it taken care of because it can move from the outside to the inside. So there's a lot of stuff going on around here. We're trying to take care of it, but that's another example of what Iman Rashon was talking about. So hopefully the uh, priming will keep it out um, and um, a sealant that we put on it, and hopefully we won't have to worry about major problems, but those types of things, you cannot ignore them. You cannot ignore them because they can cause very, very serious health issues. Okay? Anything else on that? Uh, Aktaya, had a question. <coughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. 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 Praise to the Most High. Uh, mine is still on the uh, same topic of leprosy. Um, this is kind of uh, talking about the ringworm that you mentioned earlier, Sean. And, um, and is that is that kind of like a start of a leprosy as you were talking about it? I didn't 
really catch where it was really going when you mentioned a ringworm. And also, normally when we talk about leprosy, they normally bring up an albino, and I want to do to maybe quickly touch on that as well. Rabbi Shalom. Shalom. Corey's going to put up something on the screen here. No, uh, I just gave an example of uh, Slika, of, of something that someone may mistake for leprosy when I mentioned the ringworm. Because it looks, it can look like what leprosy may look like as it relates to the way it breaks out on the skin. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why I gave that example of ringworm. But that's not leprosy. Okay? Just want to make that clear. And this is an example of what someone may see on someone else's skin and say, well, look, you have leprosy. But that would be on the priest. They would, they would now take this person to the priest or the Kohen, and the Kohen would do an inspection, a thorough inspection to see whether or not, based on the uh, descriptions that were listed here in the Tanakh, uh, whether or not this was actually leprosy that or not. Spread. Yes, that ringworm can spread. Yes, it can. It's a fungus as well, just as Sarah right. mentioned. Ringworm is another. The ringworm fungus. is very, very avoidable. All it you is. have to do is wash. Wash. Yep. That's all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very, it's avoidable. very avoidable. A lot of people. Slika. Yeah, I don't mean to cut you off, more, Cohen. But a lot of black people don't wash their hair. <laughs> You know, and especially children, they don't wash their children here, and and they can catch it from other children in school. You need to wash their hair, and uh, if you get ringworm, then it's now it has to be medically ad uh, addressed. You have to do something that's going to kill antibiotic or something, a medication that's going to kill that fungus. If not, it's going to spread, and it's also very contagious. It is. So, um, you know, we just need to put that hair under the shower sometimes and wash it. Uh, you know, because that's not something you want, because that's like a stigma. It's a stigma for children in school. And so I strongly suggest you keep a watch on your children's hair, and uh, don't just watch it, but wash it. Even their hands and stuff, though, like... Yeah, and it can spread. It's common sure. in Guyana, like uh, children, they play in the dirt and in the sand and in the mm -hmm. trenches or what have you. And, and they, they don't that, wash They don't wash their hands, and that... Um, that a fungus begins it to develop, it gets in the pores. In the pores <coughs> and it'll start spreading seriously, and you have to Damn. now use antibiotics Damn. to kill it. Another example that um, that Tyel mentioned was an albino. Uh, people sometimes mistake albinos and things, but that's not leprosy. That's, that's a lack of pigmentation. Lack, exactly. It's a lack of pigmentation. They're born with that, and it also affects their eyesight. It does. Um, most most albinos can can very have difficulty seeing. You can see them squinting. They can That's 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 something that's important. Okay, light yeah, light hurts it, and it, the pigmentation doesn't take, and then that's what happens. Okay, any other questions on on anything? More more talk about sneak out. There's too much uh, side bars going on, Doctor Shah. Shah. Can you use the mic? We need to be able to hear you. Okay, so I didn't see that. I just wanted to give some other information to the portion that was taught this morning. The Sarai'at is not, don't doesn't mean leprosy. It's not only, what we're speaking in that book is not talking about just leprosy. That's the English translation that it gives it. The, the creator is speaking about any skin disorder. Skin disorders can go from different, it can vary, and it can start in one way and go from vary, and it can transform into different things. And what the creator was trying to tell us is that we have to be careful of how we serve the creator, how we deal, because he can just put anything on you. That skin or disorder didn't come from any, it's not a, a, a plague that could come from you picking up anything like a ringworm or anything. It's something that's more spiritual. The creator put that on you if you didn't miss it. When Miriam got that, the creator put a skin disorder on her right away. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know how to heal. It has no cure. So this, these, that thing that that's how I, that was spoken of today, it didn't have a cure. The Creator put it on you, and He alone had to take it off. But that's what I just want to add. To what going on. Okay. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I don't, don't totally agree with that. But uh, you're well. You're entitled to your opinion. I think that um, the fact that the Creator would have the, uh, the priest look at it and the, and the roofing look at it, tells me that uh, it's, it's, it's something that has to be monitored or they can cut it out because a, a wall doesn't, you know, uh, doesn't break the law. 
Um, so I think that um, some of them, uh, I think the situation with Mary Ellen was a situation of a, a curse on her, but I don't think, as you said, there are different forms of it. I think some of them can be, uh, a, a, you know, a punishment from the Most High. Some of them could just be something that's in the earth that he put in there along with other diseases, and we're plagued by it. Um, we just have to be careful to say yes. But your point is well taken. Um, anyone else? We're going to move on to what's going on. Okay. What is going on? I just want to let y'all know something is going on. We were sitting here having this conversation. We're sitting here having this conversation about cremation. And, uh, and uh, I didn't touch this thing. It's listening. It says, I would say if someone wants to be cremated, then they should remove. Wow. Big brother. That's in the thing portion where you put in, this thing is listen. That's why I turn mine off. I don't leave mine on. Yeah, it has, it has that on here, whatever they call it. Big brother. They got a lot of nerves. I mean, I'm looking at this thing, and it's talking about cremation, and I punch absolutely nothing in this iPad. Turning it off right now. Now, what's going on? Now, what's going on, exactly? Now, I want to do uh, some portion out of there. I'm just going to keep an eye on it. It's watching me. I'm turning it up. <laughs> okay. They talked about Big Brother way back when. When we were youngsters, they talked about Big Brother. Mm. He's alive and kicking. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's going on? All right. Couple of things. The first one up, a USC student in Columbia got into the wrong Uber car and lost her life. Um, there's certain things you gotta do. See, this is the problem. Most people, when they use Uber, they're drunk. So they can barely, a lot of times, they're drunk. So they stumble into the car, they don't care what car they get in. She wasn't paying attention. She wasn't paying attention. Come from a night of drinking. You got to ask the driver, who are you here for? They have to tell you who they're there for. And if your name is John, and they say John, and they may not even be the right person. But you got there's certain things. When you get an Uber confirmation, it tells you what the driver's name is, the kind of car, the plate number. Right. My suggestion is this. If you even helping somebody get into an Uber car, Walk out with them. Check and make sure they do what you, what, that you help them do what they may not be able to do. In other words, talk and have a conversation and say what's going on, uh, you know, make sure they're in the right vehicle or something just to try to protect their lives because this is happening a lot. Just the other day, I, this was after this, a uh, girl got raped because uh, she got into a car, wasn't an Uber car, and he pulled her off to the side, raped her, and then dropped her off at the house. Wow. Sure did. It got him. That's crazy. Raped her, and then took her home. That's ridiculous. Come on. Show us. Show us. You, he's going to bring in Mike. Show us alone. Um, the, the one thing I'll add to that, too, I mean, I always check the license plate to make sure that it's the right car. But you also have to make sure that another thing that some of them are doing, whether it's your Uber driver or not, is they put the child locks on the back doors. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah, you have totally. to make sure, because that's, I think that happened to her, that she yes. couldn't right. get out of the car. Right. So you have to make sure that when you go in that back seat, I, sometimes I sit in the front, but make sure that the child locks are not on so that you're not stuck in there and can't get out of the car. So that's, I mean, you gotta just triple check everything. And that's in the door. You look in the door jam of the door, and it has a latch there. You just pull that latch. I think up is locking it, down is releasing it. Uh, that's crazy. But, uh, well, I mean, I'm just showing the one that I saw on TV. So if it's a button, whatever. You're talking about in the car? We're not talking about in the car. That's how you can set it. But they can. No, no. I'm sorry. Okay, show them. Because I'm saying. They have newer cars now. My car specifically, I can press child lock from the front seat. It will lock them. There's yes. no little switch. No, the switch is on the door. Um, not door. Okay, you, your car. They have yeah. new cars. They have new cars. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check new my car. Cars. I'm gonna check new my car. Cars. It ain't a new car, but I'm gonna check it. 
Okay. I want to know. I'm not Ubering people and I'm not locking them in, so it doesn't matter. On you. But I just want to know how that works. Just in case. So anybody got a 2018? Can you raise your hand? So we can rip you off and take your money. All right? Okay, moving right along. Uh, okay, that's, that's not going to help us who are driving. It's going to help the people who are getting into these cars. Okay, uh, did y'all see this hit, this driver that hit and run and, and the little girl ran into the, yeah. ran to the car? I guess she was trying to not get smashed in the doorway, so she tried to get out of the way and ran right into the car. Yeah, and he ran off. He said that, oh, he was being hijacked, uh, yeah. carjacked. Yeah. How you, no, you, you ran a red uh, stop sign. That's what you did. Mm -hmm. And these are these houses that right across the stop sign is a house. Yeah. You know, like a dead end uh, road or whatever. Just got to tell our children to be careful. There was nothing she could do. She didn't have, this, she was doing nothing wrong. This joker just was caught? not. Did they catch him? They finally yeah. caught him. He didn't, they didn't catch him right away because he ran off. But uh, they went and found a 20-year-old guy, just so you know. And then another cop, child was shot in Phoenix a couple of days ago, 10 years old. Mm. This 20-year-old Hispanic, I don't know if he's from Mexico. <laughs> so don't tell Trump. I'm not one to gossip, so you didn't hear from me. But this kid, this guy, Apparently the parent, the driver, cut him off. The guy followed them home. Pulled into the driveway and then he shoots. A couple of shots, shot the father. The daughter was sleeping in the car. The shot woke her up and she died. 10 years old, they found him because they had surveillance, saw, them, saw him following them. A white pickup. Sad. 20 year old guy. Why? Because somebody cut you off now they deserve to die. This, this country is jacked up. The driver of the car that shot them. This was a black family. They had pictures of the daughter and videos of them. Sad. Okay, so this is, this is a new statistic. You might be interested in it, but frankly. Uh, 45 now tells an average of 22 lies a day. <laughs> Up from six when he became president. A day. Now that's the ones that people know about. That's not the ones that he says in private that nobody's telling us. 22 lies a day when he's in front of a camera. There's something wrong with that. And then Biden is hugging people and they go into town with that. I mean, a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. The homicide rate is climbing everywhere, especially in Charlotte. Y'all, it's really getting bad here. Charlotte, when I moved here, was not like this. Um, we got to be careful out there. I don't care where you live. You got to be careful. Times are getting rough, okay? There's another one. Uh, 32 year old man claimed to be a 14 year old boy. <laughs> Missing since he was six. Y'all hear about that? Yeah, but that wasn't the one. Well, he's 23. The boy was six and he's only going to be 14. He was claiming to be a 14 year old boy. Yeah, he was 23 years old and what he did, he was in jail. And while he was in jail, he saw a 2020 uh, expose on this kid. So he gets out. And then he walks up to somebody and said, I just escaped from two kidnappers out of the Red Roof Inn and uh, I was a child, uh, what do you call himself, a sexual whatever. And they went and told the family, put it on the news. They sure did. It was sad because what they should, because they thought they found the kid. But you can't tell this guy got a beard and everything and he's 14. So after they put it out on the news cycle, then they, they do a DNA test, and then they sit down with the FBI, the FBI, and, he, and they caught him in the lie. Now they're charging him with a whole bunch of crimes. Lying to the FBI is an automatic crime, and following the false whatever. 
but the family is going through it all over again. Yes. Yeah. Goodness gracious. But this guy is 23 years old, and he's at the, and they can't figure out he's not 14 before they go tell the family, tell the news media, and everybody else. They did that all wrong. Hopefully, they learned their lesson. Okay. Um, former Vice President Joe Biden is being accused of inappropriate touching with with five women. Um, you know, that's old stuff that they just bringing up from the Me Too movement. He's a touchy-feely guy. He's a real touchy-feely guy, but now everybody's bringing up, but it's really affecting him because he's, first of all, he's a jerk. Because instead of just saying, you know what, I'm sorry, I, I understand, I, I meant no harm, or whatever, he's making excuses, and you know, and he's, and now he's joking about it, and it's just ticking people off. So, um, I don't know whether he's going to claim his, uh, if you don't shut it down, because this thing could have been over with by now, but he keeps making dumb statements in public, and um, and they're holding it, they, 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 they may drag this up. And then of all people, the predator himself is making fun of him. How you doing, Joe? How I feel, Joe? 45 is joking with him. When he got 20-something women, said he pretty much raped them, and he's running his mouth. You know what he's saying? But I can get away with it. And he can. He's been getting away with it. Okay, <laughs> speaking of 45, Joe, uh, so uh, Mueller's report is summarized by the, uh, the um, Attorney General as no evidence of collusion, while Michael Cohen says he found more files. This just came out yesterday. He found a whole slew of files, so he's asking Congress to hold off his, uh, his, his, well, he's already been sentenced, hold off his uh, surrender, right, to, to, to his surrender until he can go through all of these files because he thinks he got more dirt on, my, on, on, um, on Trump. So we'll see where that goes. I don't know. I, I'm just waiting. It's the creator. It's just holding this up for some reason. I don't know why, but God's in control of all of this. And this just happened this week. Uh, well, two things. You had this one guy that went into this home. I don't know why he did it. Shot these elderly people. The, the wife died, mm -hmm. and the husband mm -hmm. lived. And he might have. And they knew him. They knew him. He shot them. And this one here. This woman died in Charlotte. A sister this week after being caught in a crossfire on Tryon and 28th Street. They had it all blocked off. This lady was passing through, and two people were shooting at each other. And she's just driving by. Dead. They had a vision for her, uh, I think it was last time, the night before. By the mercies of Yah, I tell you, if you don't walk with Yah, that's your only protection for some of this stuff. Certain things we can do, and, and certain things are out of our hands. We really have to be careful how we walk in this way because the Creator will put it on us. We can either be a victim or we can be a survivor. You know, we can be one. There's so many things we don't even know what we survive from. We don't even know what the Creator let us get a pass on. Give thanks. Give thanks. That's all I can suggest to you. That's all I have. What I'd like to do now is uh, show a video for the yellow dean and for the adults. This is for Black History Month. I don't want to call it Black History Month. This is Black History. And it, um, you have that ready for me? Okay. And we're going to take a break for this. It's about 10 or 12 minutes. And then uh, we're going to let uh, Cohen come up here and sing a song. And then I'm going to get into some uh, some other stuff, some history and some other stuff. Moray, is it, is it, is it available? Yes. Somebody have a question? What's the point? Why he's doing it? Hold it up. Moray, just get it ready. It was just some more news that you might not have mentioned. Okay. Uh, one was, uh, did anyone see the car that ran through the grass and hit the little girl. I just brought that up. Okay. I might have been confused about that. But also, um, did you hear about the lady who was riding her son on the tractor trailer? And he fell oh, yeah. out, and they cut off his fingers and his calf. And his right. So yeah. that's another piece of news. Yeah, she was on the lawnmower. It wasn't a tractor trailer. It was a riding mower. And um, I don't know if she was running this mower, or she was just running the tractor park. Because you can engage the... Um, if the rotor or, or the blades, you can engage the blades or you could just use it as a little, you know, what do you call it? Well, she must have been using the blades 
because he fell off and went under there and it messed him up bad, yeah. So they're bringing charges against the mom for that. Okay. Shabbat Shalom, Nicole. Uh, I just wanted to bring up this also that uh, I'm not sure if anybody heard about it. It was local news that there was an individual at a, a hospital in Charlotte that ended up stealing the ambulance. Yes. And there was a, apparently a patient in the back. And then he tried to drive and get out of the uh, parking lot and ended up crashing into about three cars. Yeah. Come to find out that was a student at my school. Oh. Um, I found out I was I was calling up the mother because the student was actually supposed to graduate in June. So I was calling up the mother to try to get information about his uh, size so I can order his cap and gown. And then the mom was like, no, he's not going to be graduating. This happened. And then I went back and watched the video and I was like, wow. Uh, I mean, he was yeah. on the car. Yeah. Yeah. On top of a car. Yeah. So, you know, mental health is just it's serious. You know, uh, it's it definitely serious. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it was serious. Serious, serious stuff. Okay, uh, how are we doing over there? All right. We're going to turn out the lights so we can watch this video out there, please. It's going to blow us away. Can we get sound? Turn it down. Where's the sound? Where's the sound? Right quick. ever heart surgery in 1893 without the assistance of x-rays, antibiotics, or modern anesthesia. Dr. Dan, as he was known, was born in Pennsylvania and received his medical degree from Chicago Medical School. In 1891, he founded Provident Hospital, the first interracial hospital in Chicago on the city's south side. The hospital established the first black nursing school. One fateful day, two years later, a young black man named James Cornish was brought to Provident Hospital with a serious wound on his chest. With his patient bleeding heavily, Williams saw only one option. He performed surgery on James' chest, fixing the severed artery, and then closed the wound. James was discharged 51 days later, fully recovered. He lived another 20 years, proving the success of Dr. Dan's operation. George Washington Carver was a botanist, agricultural chemist, and inventor. His innovation and determination helped to restore the struggling agricultural economy of the South during the early 20th century. Fascinated with nature from an early age, he grew a secret flower garden in the woods near his foster home. He earned the nickname The Plant Doctor by the time he was 10 years old because of his skill in caring for sick plants. At 27, Carver entered Iowa State College of Agriculture and graduated as one of their outstanding scholars. He was appointed their greenhouse director and an assistant instructor in botany. He earned his master's degree in 1896 and added his long-held design to help 
poor black southerners, he accepted Booker T. Washington's <laughs> offer to be the director of agriculture at Tuskegee Institute. Southern cotton farmers were bringing in smaller harvests and thus less money. Carver examined the soil and found the cotton plants had taken important nutrients from the soil. He discovered that peanuts, sweet potatoes, soybeans, and cowpeas return nitrogen to the soil, so he urged farmers to plant these in rotation with cotton. The crops helped feed the farmers' families and allowed them to grow more cotton than before. When the farmers struggled to find customers for their peanut and sweet potato crops, Carver made more than 300 products from peanuts, such as ink, shampoo, soap, and candy, and molasses, glue, and flour from sweet potatoes. Carver donated his life savings to Tuskegee to establish the George Washington Carver Foundation, which helped provide research opportunities for students. A museum was also founded in his honor. President Franklin D. Roosevelt ordered the dedication of the George Washington Carver National Monument, located near the scientist's childhood home in Missouri. It was the first national monument dedicated to an African American. George Washington Carver believed it is simply service that measures success. Madam C.J. Walker was the first African American millionaire businesswoman in the United States. Born Sarah Breedlove in Louisiana, she was orphaned at age six. At age 20, she became a widow with a two-year-old daughter to support. She worked as a washerwoman in St. Louis, Missouri, a job which required difficult manual labor with little pay. Still, she attended night school and saved what money she could to invest in her experiments. Sarah suffered from alopecia, a condition which left her hair dry and brittle. Sometimes patches fell out. Dissatisfied with the hair treatments available at the time, she mixed different combinations of oils in her bathtub until she discovered a satisfactory formula. The treatment worked for her, and she then began testing her wonderful hair grower on other people. It was a hit, and after moving to Denver, Colorado, she perfected her treatment and created other products, including a straightening comb, which she patented in 1905. Sarah sold products door to door and used her own before and after photos as proof of her product's effectiveness. Sarah married Charles Joseph Walker in 1906 and began calling herself Madam C.J. Walker. Her Walker method took off, allowing her to establish an office and manufacturing headquarters after only one year. With the help of her daughter and nieces, Walker recruited more saleswomen to help sell her products. In 1908, Walker opened a second office in Philadelphia, as well as a beauty parlor and school in Pittsburgh. Her hair courses eventually became available in New York, Indianapolis, and at black colleges throughout the South. In 1917, Walker built a 30-room mansion in New York and began to sponsor black artists and writers, even establishing the Madame Walker Theater Center in Indianapolis. By that time, her manufacturing company took up an entire city block and employed over 3,000 people. Madam C.J. Walker also donated generously to scholarship funds at Tuskegee and Palmer Memorial Institutes and organizations such as the YMCA and the NAACP. Garrett A. Morgan was an African-American inventor born in 1875 in Kentucky. One night, a Cleveland Waterworks construction crew became trapped underground in a cloud of toxic fumes when their tunnel beneath Lake Erie exploded. First responders made two unsuccessful attempts to rescue the workers. With time running out, the authorities summoned Garrett and his brother Frank. They arrived with a gas mask Morgan had patented two years before. Earlier breathing devices were unreliable, so Morgan invented something better. Firefighters, engineers, chemists, and other workers who regularly encountered dangerous gases were already using his breathing device in other cities. He later upgraded his mask with its own air supply, and it became of great importance during World War I and later wars. At the Cleveland disaster site, the Morgan brothers and two volunteers strapped on the gas mask 
and made several brave trips through the darkness of the 200 foot long toxic tunnel. They rescued more than 20 people. Morgan was awarded a medal from the International Association of Fire Engineers. The gas mask was not his first or last invention. Morgan worked as a handyman at a sewing machine shop in Ohio and at age 26 sold his belt fastener for sewing machines. Eight years later, he opened a tailoring shop which manufactured dresses and suits. After only one year, Morgan and his wife purchased a home where they eventually raised three sons. After accidentally discovering a hair straightening substance in 1913, Morgan established the G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company. The profit supported his continued research. In 1923, Morgan patented an automatic traffic signal, which led to the overhead and sidewalk traffic lights that keep us safe to this day. I always knew I'd go to space. Mae Jemison, the first African-American woman astronaut, once said. Jemison, born in 1956, is also a physician, teacher, and the founder and president of two technology companies, the Jemison Group, and an advanced medical device company, Biosentient Corporation. Born in Alabama and raised in Chicago, Jemison was fascinated with science from an early age. Her father and mother were very encouraging. She said, my parents were the best scientists I knew because they were always asking questions. Jemison entered Stanford University on scholarship when she was only 16 years old. Mm -hmm. She graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering and a Bachelor of Arts in African and African American Studies. In 1981, she received her doctorate from Cornell University Medical College. Jemison practiced medicine in Los Angeles, California before serving in the Peace Corps as a medical officer in Sierra Leone and Liberia for two years. In addition to speaking English, Jemison speaks Swahili, Russian, and Japanese. Inspired by the life of Sally Ride, the first woman in space, Jemison applied to NASA and in 1987, she became one of only 15 people chosen out of 2,000 candidates for their astronaut corps. Jemison's first and only space flight began on September 12, 1992, when the Space Shuttle Endeavour took off for its second mission. Jemison served as a science mission specialist on the eight-day mission, which was a joint effort between the United States and Japan. Jemison resigned from NASA in March of 1993 to form the Jemison Group Incorporated, which highlights ways to bring science and technology to everyday life. The following year, she founded the Dorothy Jemison Foundation for Excellence, named in honor of her mother, which includes an international space camp for high school students called the Earth We Share. In 2011, the U.S. military chose this foundation to receive $500,000 in funding to help launch the 100-year Starship project. Our task, our mission, Jemison explained, is to make sure all the capabilities needed to mount a human interstellar mission exist. Jemison envisions public participation from everyone, regardless of who they are or where they come from. Someday, perhaps, more people will be able to confidently declare, I always knew I'd go to space. That was very interesting. Yep. Uh, it's nice to divert. We talk about black history, but that's important because it's not just about what the suffering we went through. In spite of all the suffering that we've gone through, you see that we had people still excelling. And they're going, we're going back to the time just beyond slavery, reconstruction. These people were born in the, uh, in the 1900s, 18-something, and yet they were able to make these major accomplishments. Uh, all the glory goes to Yah for supporting us, for, for even having us survive under the most um, destitute conditions. We are really, really, really a blessed people, and it just goes to show you that, uh, you know, we have a lot that we can accomplish. 
Uh, Colin, you want to come up and sing a couple of songs that wake them up a little bit? And then I'll do some history. Let's give praise to the Creator Maker of Heaven and Earth. Bless you, Jesus. For the hour, this day I pray. To you I give thanks. Yeah, I apologize. Each time I call Yah, I'm always in need. Father, each time I cry to you. I always want Sorry, yeah, yeah. this day I pray just to give thanks, Yah. Father, this time I kneel only to thank you. Jehovah, this time I pray. Yeah, I give thanks. 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 Just wanna say, yeah, I give thanks. Life is day, yeah, I give thanks For good health, yeah, I give thanks All your love, yeah, I give thanks Joy I have, yeah, I give thanks Peace of mind, yeah, I give thanks Thanks for you, yeah, I give thanks Yeah, I give thanks, yeah, I give thanks Yeah, I give thanks, yeah, I give thanks so long we give his praises away. So long we call his own idol. So long we keep confusing. So long we give God thanks to men. God to stop this day. The world will know to give thanks. Give thanks to who? Give thanks to God. Yah, my king, Yah, I give thanks. My everything, Yah, I give thanks. You should know, Yah, I give thanks. I love you so, Yah, I give thanks. Joy I have, Yah, I give thanks. I praise your name, Yah, I give thanks. Yah, I give thanks, Yah, I give thanks. Yah, I give thanks, Yah, I give thanks. Yeah, I give thanks, yeah, I give thanks. Yeah, I give thanks, yeah, I give thanks. So long we've been giving his praise his way. So long we've been calling on idols. So long we've been deep confusing. So long we've been giving God praise his way. God to stop this day. The world will know to give thanks. Yeah, I'm in 
Let us sing the song Ha Azin Ali, asking Yah to give ear to our cries, to our plea, and to the praises that we offer up to His holy name. Not only on this Shabbat, but on each and every day that we gather to praise and glorify His name. And even throughout the week when we call upon Him individually. Ha Azin Ali. Ali <laughs> Okay, I gotta get that back in there. They all 
knock till you try to get an answer to them. You don't have to follow up to knock tonight and help them out here. Good, y'all need another song? Yes. Song. Yes. Is there any something else to liven them up a little more? Yes. Yeah. All right, little ones. Y'all get your costume on and get, get in there. I mean, y'all maybe, what, what song do you all want? We praise y'all. We praise y'all. Yeah. Okay, we're going to hear their voices on who prays down. Turn up the mic with me. Come get you. Y'all know the words for we praise God, right? So that means you all need to sing also with me. Because we all praise in y'all together. Amen. Y'all need to sing also with me. Because we all praise in y'all together. So get ready. We praise God. We praise God. God, he is and always will be our king, and we will praise him, and we will serve him. You know we need him, and yes, we love him. God, he's alive, forever living, watching you and me, yes, he is. God, he's alive, forever living.
Has anyone else been reading the history? Is that Nehemiah still here? Hey, uh, ask him if, uh, come up, please. So we're going to First uh, Samuel, and does anyone, Eliab, you know where we left off? And then I'll cover it up. Oh, um, what is this sign? He's texting. All right, they have to hold off a minute. I'm sorry. We're still trying to make a decision. Okay, so we're going into uh, chapter 9. Um, chapter 8. No, 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 we did chapter 9. We did chapter 9. And here we are. Or anyone else knows what we, what happened in chapter 9? Did we do chapter We didn't do chapter 10. We didn't do Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We did that because that's <coughs> Saul and his servant went to. Um, we didn't do that. Maybe I'm just ahead of myself because I've done it. <coughs> All right, what was it? Okay, that's where we are. All right, so um, Elia, you want to tell us what happened in chapter eight? Do you remember? Hmm. I can't hear you. I thought you got um, in chapter 8 of Shukasawa Shalom. In chapter 8 of chapter 8 of they were asking for a king and Samuel went to pray to Yah and he said um, I can unto the people and to um, to make them a king because they um, they didn't um, forsake you Forsake you, um, Samuel did forsaken Yah, and he, then he, um, then he made them a king. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent job. Excellent job. Um, and he caught us up, and so they got their king. So now. They're going to tell us how the Creator chose the king. All right, so that's where we're going now. We're making, he's going to tell us how, he's introducing who the king is going to be, right? So, uh, my reader, are you ready? I don't think I have a plug back here. Oh, I do. I need to plug in. Do me a favor, get my charger from up on my chair for me, please. Hold on. I need to plug in my phone. Okay, family. going forward. It's a new year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got our two witnesses. Amen. <laughs> okay. So now we're moving on with the new, uh, with the next chapter, chapter 9, and it reads on this wise. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zior, the son of Bechorat. The son of Aphia, the son of a Benjamite, a mighty man of valor. Okay, so now they're introducing the family where the king is going to come from. They're introducing his Abba, and he is from the tribe of Benyamin. Mm -hmm. And he had a son whose name was Shaul, young and goodly. And there was none among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulder and upward, 
He was higher than any of the people. So not only was he a good person, but he was taller than anybody in the land. Yeah. Now the Kamuni of Kish, Shaul's father, were lost. And Kish said unto Shaul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee. Arise and go seek the Kamuni. Okay, so they lost. So, the, so apparently these animals ran, a, ran away. Okay, and he had to, he sent his son, uh, uh, Saul, Shaul, to go find the cattle. And he took, and this wasn't just a servant, this was a friend, I believe. He, somebody he, he probably hung out with. And they too went to look for these animals. And he passed through the hill country of Ephraim and passed through the land of Cilicia, but they found them not. So they went way out there looking for these animals. <laughs> and then, then they passed through the land of Salim, and there. They were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. All right, so they went to Huntersville, they went to Charlotte, they went to Concord. <laughs> They're looking for these animals and they couldn't find them. So now they're thinking, well, you know, we've been going for a while. We need to head home. When they came to the land of Zuf, Shaul said to a servant that was with them, Come and let us return. That's my father leave caring for the common evening and become anxious concerning well, He says that now they're going to stop looking for the animals and they're going to wonder what happened to us. We need to go back home. And the servant said unto him, Behold now, there is in the city a man of Elohim, and he is the man that is held in honor. All that he said have come surely to pass. Now let us go thither. For adventure, he will tell us concerning our journey, where on we go. Okay, so they're near this town where uh, the seer is located. And he said, I guess the servant knew a lot more about this guy <laughs> than Shaul did. So he said, listen, I know there's a guy over here who can give us answers. So he says, let's go check him out and see if he can tell us where the ka Kamorim are. Now that's, you know, he, this guy got nothing better to do than go look and say, uh, I think they're over there, you know, so, <laughs> I guess. Then said Shaul to his servant, but behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? He's got to get paid. Yes. For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring the man of Elohim. What have we? And the servant answered Shaul and said, Behold, I have in my hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. That will I give to the man of Elohim to tell us our way. So he says, I have a couple of dollars. Let's uh, give him what I have. And, you know, you can pay me back later because your family is rich. I'm just a servant. <laughs> he said, uh, let, let me, let's give him that and see if he'll entertain us and give us the information that we need. This is all the hand of Yah, obviously. Right. The creator had to get... The Creator had to get uh, Shaul to to uh, no, he had to get Shaul to Samuel to ship right. So he had to let the Kamorim run off, send him out there, so he can end up where Shaul is. I mean, where Shamu, Samuel is, so that he can get anointed. That's what this, this is all the hand of Yah. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of Elohim, thus he said, Come, let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet, but before time called a seer. Okay, so he said, so they're telling us how he how the name of the person, that what they do, was changed from a seer to now he's called a prophet. Then said Shaul to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went into the city where the man of Elohim was, and as they went up, the asset of the city to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is. Behold, he is before thee. Make haste now. For he has come today into the city, for the people who have sacrificed today in the hot place. Okay, so they're telling him how they can meet up with uh with uh, Samuel so that they can have an audience with him. And the timing is just perfect, if you notice. Everything is lining up right on time as soon as ye are coming to the city you shall straightway find them before he go up to the high place to eat for the people will not eat until he come because he because he doth bless the sacrifice and afterwards they eat that are bitter okay so he they're giving him the whole lowdown on how this whole thing works so that they can uh meet up with him and 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 all of these things can happen the creator is putting all of these people in place in order for uh, 
Shaul to get this message from the Creator, which is coming through Samuel. Now, therefore, get you up, for at this time you shall find him. And they went up to the city. As they came within the city, behold, Shemuel came out toward them to go up to the high place. So they run right into the man that they're seeking. Now the Most High had revealed unto Shemuel a day before Shaul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benyamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be prince over my people in Israel. And he shall save my people out of the land hand of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people, because their cry is coming to me. Okay, so the Most High is now having um, a conversation, he has had a conversation with Samuel telling him, I'm sending you the guy that I'm going to that I want you to anoint to be king over Israel. And, and the Creator is recognizing that the people need some type of help. Right. Okay. He's accepted the fact that they've rejected him, and in his mercy, he's now trying to promote that this kingship will be successful. Okay. Okay. So he's giving him the word, and he's uh, trying to save them out of hand. He's figuring, okay, well, we're going to let Shaul do this. And uh, so let's make it let's make it work. It's like when you get lemons, you make what lemonade. Okay, so this is what's happening. The Creator wasn't happy with the idea, but in His mercy, He's still trying to give us uh, some type of help so that we can be successful as a nation. And when Shemuel saw Shaul, the Most High spoke unto him, saying, "Behold, the man of whom I said unto thee, this same shall have authority over my people." Then Shaul drew near to Shemuel in the gate and said. Tell me, I pray thee, where is the Sears house? Okay, so <laughs> okay, so the Most High, uh, Samuel sees Saul, and 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 he's and he's and and Jehovah spoke unto him. Behold, the man whom I said is in other words, this is the man that I'm that I want you to anoint. And then Saul asks him, uh, could you tell me where I can find the Sears? So they're just coming right into contact with each other. This is Yah. There's no such thing as a coincidence. That's right. Okay, this is all Yah. And Shemuel answered Shaul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me into the high place, for ye shall eat with me today. And in the morning I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thy heart. And as for thy comrade that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom... Okay. Just bear with me. I got a lot of stuff going on here. My apologies. Um... I apologize for that. There's a lot going on in Israel right now. Okay, someone is trying to get the word, so I can see if we get it out. Okay, so. And Samuel said unto Saul. Hold on. What was the last two lines you read? Verse 19. Okay, so he said, uh, he says, I'm the seer. I want you to come to dinner, and and don't worry about the camels. I've already, we've already found them, and everybody, the donkeys, we've already found them, and uh, and that's fine. You don't have to worry about that. I just want you to have dinner with me because I need to tell you something. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee? He don't and know what he's talking about. All this house? He said, yeah, a very special guy. Didn't you know you and your family are very special people? <laughs> he said, me? <laughs> and Shaul answered and said, What is that all about? Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? <laughs> and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? We is poor. Wherefore, does, wherefore then speakest thou to me after this family? Why are you treating me like I'm royalty? I'm just a humble... Old boy from back in the hood. Right. Oh, in Benjamin. <laughs> and Shemuel took Shaul and his servant and brought them into the chamber and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden. Okay, so now not only oh, is he being. 30 persons. He's not only just going there to have dinner, he is the guest of honor. That's right. Okay, so now they're treating him like he's like the reason why they were all there. Mm -hmm. He's got to be confused. He had a great start. Shaul had a great start. He really messed up, but he had a great start. And Shemuel said unto the cook, 
bring the portion which I gave thee, mm -mm. of which I said unto thee, set it by thee. And the cook took up the thigh and that which was upon it and set it before Shaul. Okay, now let me ask you, what's your favorite part of this bird? Rice. <laughs> so, <laughs> mine too. Okay, so he got the best part of the food and it's like, what? This is crazy. Me, I like the whole half a chicken, basically. I like to get the, the hinds and the breast. And you know, just give me a half of the bird. I'll be good. Okay? So, he gives him, he gives him the best portion, and this has got to be confusing. Time sheet. Yeah. And the cook took up the thigh, that, and that which was upon it, and said it before Shaul. And Shemuel said, Behold, that which hath been reserved, Set it before thee and eat, because unto the uh, because unto the appointed time have it been kept for thee. For well, I said, I have invited the people. So Shaul did eat with Shemuel that day, and when they were come down from the high place into the city, he spoke with Shaul upon the house time. Okay, so now he's getting ready to have this. At this point, as confused as Shaul or Saul is, he is starting to. I think understand something's about to happen here because he's being treated in this manner with so much respect. Wow. Yeah. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the break of the day, break of day. Shemuel called to Shaul in the house top, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Shaul arose. They went out, both of them, he and Shemuel abroad. Okay, so he's taking them off separate so that he can have this conversation because the purpose is for confidentiality right now. Yeah. This is not supposed to get out until the time and the place appointed by the Creator. So he's taking them off so he can have this conversation. And I would think that he also said more than he's just pouring that oil on him. He said some things to him to kind of get his mind in tune with what he's about to embark on. You young man, you may not realize the burden has been placed on you, but the Creator has appointed you, and this is for your, His glory, and you just need to follow the advice of, of, of Samuel, because he's going to be your guy, and you need to, or well, he's him himself, and, and you need to just do the right thing, and, 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 and when the time is right, this will become known to all Israel. They were going down at the end of the city. Shemuel said to Shaul, bid the servants to pass on before us. Right. And he passed on. But stand thou still at this time, that I may cause thee to hear the word of Elohim. Oh, yeah. So let's go into the next chapter and see what this is. Then Shemuel took the vial of oil and poured it upon his head. And kissed him and said, Is it not that Yehovah have anointed thee to be prince over his inheritance? When thou art depart from me today, that thou shalt find two men by the tomb of Rachel, in the border of Benjamin and Zelda. Now let me just say this. First of all, Shaul is in shock. You just got appointed and anointed to be king of Israel. So now he's probably in so much shock, he's like, you may not believe me, but I'm going to tell you what the future holds. These little, simple little details to let you know that I'm, I'm wise enough to know and I, the Creator is working through me. Because if you could tell me uh, when I leave out of here, okay, uh, when you get down to Sunset uh, Road, right, right. you're gonna, uh, right. there's going to be a, a blue Mercedes going to pull up next to you right. and the guy is going to ask you for right. directions. Absolutely. And uh, when Absolutely. you get down to Harris, yeah. you know, yeah. this, this old lady is going to stop in the street. You got to get out and help her up. Right. Come on now. You start telling me right. details like that. I know you know. Come on. So this is why he's giving them all of these details so that he would understand that the message that he's given not to take it lightly. And talk to you. In the border of Benjamin and Zelzah, and they will say unto thee, The Kamorim which thou wittest to seek are found. And lo, thy father have left off caring for the Kamorim, and is anxious concerning you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shall thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the terebinth of Tabor, and there shall meet thee there three men going up wow. to Elohim to Baal, one carrying three kids, 
Another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. Details. Okay, details. Right. Time machine. And they will salute thee, and will give thee two cakes of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hand. Now, this guy is a seer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he sees all of these things that are going to happen. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of Elohim, which is in the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that, that thou shalt meet a band of prophets coming down from the high place mm -hmm. with a psaltery, and with a timbrel, and with a pipe, and with a harp before them. And they will be prophesied. Now, I just want to say this. This man, <laughs> Samuel, <laughs> is telling him a lot of stuff, but where's he getting it from? He's not just getting it. The Creator is putting all of this in his head. It's really important to understand the basics of how the Creator works. To know that, and we talk about it all the time, uh, fate versus destiny. This is destiny. This is what the Creator has already established. And we can do certain things in our life to make it better or make things work out for us, but the Creator has already got the plan set out. It's our mission to follow the right course so that we uh, how should I say, fulfill the purpose of the Most High. We'll sleep now. May I? Okay. Not to jump too far ahead, but with that being said, that this is destiny, based on Shaul's decisions in the future, in the future, can things be altered? Based oh, yeah. on the things that we do. Of course. I agree 100%. I think that um, it all comes together. It all has a role. Everything has a role to come together. So, I'm sorry, I'm being distracted. You see this stuff going on? <laughs> so sorry, I don't talk about it. Uh, it's difficult because Israel is, okay. Um, repeat your question. Based on some of the decisions that you, you spoke about destiny, and things right. that are just destined to be. But then, based on the decisions we make, even even after we're appointed or, or given certain jobs, it can alter things to maybe to our hurt. Yeah, because we, we still have the opportunity to choose. The, our choice is always there. This is the thing, the Creator can change His will based on the bad choices or the good choices. And, and we work in conjunction with the Creator all the time. We're not ever all in control, and the Creator uh, doesn't take full control unless He decides that He's not going to uh, how should I say, he is either doing it for protection, for mercy, or he's doing it for our hurt. He can do it for any number of reasons when he decides that he's going to take control of the situation and I'm going to let this go down like this because uh, obviously you haven't gotten the signs or whatever the case might be. It's, it's really, you really have to try to, in other words, it sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook if you don't really understand how you can place yourself in a situation where you understand how the creator functions and what our relationship to him is. If you don't have a good one, you won't even pick up on the signs that he's throwing at you. Right, right. You know, if you don't have a, and you don't understand, okay, now this means, there's no such thing as a coincidence. You gotta always say to yourself, there's no such thing as a coincidence. So what does this mean? How does this affect me? What decision should I make based on the things that are happening? Especially the things that are out of your control. Right. You gotta understand when things are out of your control that that means that the creator's in control. Or he's put somebody else in control. And you have to understand how to do, that's how we make crucial decisions. When we see that things happen in our lives unexpectedly that we have no control over, but affect us tremendously. Absolutely. How do we survive them? How do we make the right decisions? Sometimes it would just be about choosing a job, whether to take a job or not take a job. Right. Whether to quit a job or not quit a job. You know, it could be a lot of different things. Simple things that we have to understand and do, but a lot of things happening around us help us to make those decisions because the way our life is going, you know sometimes things happen and like I said, there's no such thing as a coincidence. And you say, wow, this is going, this is going, that's leading me to believe that this is where the Creator wants me to be. Now sometimes, like I said, if we're not in tune with it, we might miss it and make the wrong decisions. But uh, that's why it's so important to have a rapport with the Creator all the time so that you can trust that the way He's leading you is in a good direction. 
Because if you don't have that type of rapport with the Creator, or you're doing a lot of wrong things, then He might be leading you down the path of death. Okay. Or just calamity. It's very, very... These little things that happen in these portions have so much more meaning than the historical Absolutely. significance, uh, you know, the significant, the historical uh, account of the situation. It tells, to me, it explains to me how I have to be more in tune with what the Creator is doing in my life. You got to really understand when things are happening like this, when things are, things that what we people call coincidences are happening, they are telling, those are signs, that's like a road map that the Creator's putting in front of you. And, and you get to certain landmarks and you know whether you're going in the right direction or not. That's what's going on here. And that's how we have to understand Yah's, Yah's uh, um, his, uh, his communication and his, his relationship to us. And the Spirit of the Most High will come mightily upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and let it be, when these signs are coming to thee, that thou do as thy hand shall bind. For Elohim is with thee. So he's telling him, this is what's going to happen. But And then he's telling him, do as thy hand shall find. In other words, you do what you think is right. You understand? So this is deep. And and, 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 and and he's telling him, listen, this boy don't have this may not have a connection with the creator, but he's telling him, I'm gonna put one on you. So, you know, and he's gonna listen, it's like getting hit with a taser. You know understand what I'm saying? When the, when when the spirit of Yah comes on you, you know, it may not be as painful, but it's a shock. Especially if he's not in that realm yet. The Creator is going to put that on him and give him a whole new spirit. And now all he has to do is do the right thing. And if he doesn't, there's going to be a consequence. And that's why the Creator is giving him all of these different, and, and, and Samuel's giving him all these different signs so that he can now wrap his brain around the future and what it holds for him and Israel. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings unto thee. And to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings, seven days shalt thou tarry till I come unto thee and tell thee what thou shalt do. Okay, so the Creator, I mean, the, uh, Samuel, is giving him the full blueprint. Just listen to what I'm telling you to do. Do that. He said, and then I'm going to meet you down there. So this is like a test for, for uh, Shaul. Can you fulfill this mission the way we're laying it out for you. I'm giving you all of the things you need to gain the confidence because all the things he's going to see in the people that got the wine and all, that has really nothing to do with, the, with what his mission is. Those things are just there to convince him that he's the right person, I got the right person, you're the one, you need to do these certain things and, and, and again, he is an accidental leader. He is not asking for this. He's not seeking this. He's seeking the, uh, the, the animals. Okay? So now, he has to figure out, and he may not be the right one. I don't know, but the Creator is giving him an opportunity to be a great man. Okay? And the word tarry means wait? Yes. Yeah. Tarry, yes. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Shemuel, Elohim gave him another spirit. Changed him right up just like that. And all those signs came to pass that day. Those are just like the signs that we get in our everyday lives and things we do. And I, you just look at your life and the different things that happen in your career or in your, you know, your whatever you've been through. And remember and think back and you say to yourself, that was for a reason. This was for a reason. Now I understand why that happened. Now I understand why I ran into that person. Absolutely. I mean, just you, it's, it's, for, it's, it's, it's hindsight, but it lets you know when you think about it, it's actually telling you that the Creator is in your life. And He's moving in your life. And so these are the things that help us to make better choices. To make better decisions. Now, if you are on a path where you know, I don't, I don't want to hear what nobody got to say. Uh, this is what I want to do. I didn't see all of these signs, but uh, talk.
talk to the head. I'm going in that direction. Uh, I want that thing over there. And if somebody only told you three times, uh, that's a bad idea. Mm. No, but I done got my mind made up. You understand? I'm going to do that. I'm going to have that. And, or it can be reversed. You can see the signs and you say, wow. I didn't have anything to do with that, but I see this is the road that career went. Or he, or he, or you want to do something. You're doing the right thing all along, and all of a sudden doors start opening for you. How that happen? How that happen? How do all those doors start opening for you? It's not just because you're doing the right thing. It's because it's because the Creator has prospered it. And sometimes we reject it. We get a free ride and we reject it. I know people who, uh, they get a scholarship to a college or whatever, and, uh, and they decide that they want to have a baby instead. You know, or they want to do something, or I don't want I want to be with this guy or this girl, so I'm going to pass up on this free ride because I'm more concerned about a physical need or whatever the case might be. Drop out of school for the dumbest reason you could think of. Bad choices. And some people never recover. Never recover. And we're talking about teenagers. Their life takes a whole different path. And, and 30, 40 years later, they're miserable. We got to be careful that we understand this, this creator and that we obey him. Or we just listen. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a band of prophets met him. The Ruach of Elohim came mightily upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before town saw that, behold, he prophesied with the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is coming upon the son of Jesus? <laughs> Is Shaul also among the prophets? Can you imagine if uh, all of a sudden the Vishadai come in and start prophesying? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you serious? Gosh. <laughs> I would be. Is a Vishadai among the prophets? <laughs> That's a scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> Now we have, now we cannot say, oh, we should die, so we should die. Yeah. Everybody here be, oh, so we should die, oh gosh. No, now you got to listen to, uh, we should die. Queeby, you're in trouble now. <laughs> and one of the same place answered and said, and who is their father? Now let me just tell you this. It happened in my family. <laughs> Khan Mikael was the biggest troublemaker in the house. By far. The biggest troublemaker in our house. And when he went and got braids, braids, braids. Back then you couldn't get braids. You put no airing in your ear. And he got braids and everybody, my mother was in an uproar. He got braids. And we were like, yep, that's a Mikael, always doing something to stir up the pot. <laughs> then he had the audacity to stop going to church. <laughs> and start talking all of this stuff. <laughs> when I tell you the house was in an uproar, my mother was having a cow. <laughs> and I mean, just forget it. He started doing crazy stuff, you know, getting rid of some of his furniture, doing different things. He ever showed that you was involved in that too. <laughs> and, I mean, who knew? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it took years before it, and then what happened was, they had just started a business. Him and Roshona, Talia and Malkiel, my brother Eddie and his wife, and my parents. There was eight of them. And they all invested in this business. As soon as the business started, and they had laid out the schedule, 
all of a sudden Carl Mikhail says, well, I can't work on the Shabbat. Uh, I'm going to, what? We started this business and you're not going to work on Saturday? I mean, this was big. He says, I don't care. And this, he never says this. You can keep my money. I'm out of the business. Call Miguel doesn't give away his money. <laughs> he gave away his money. <laughs> well, he could go then. <laughs> but that must be something important. I'm telling you a true story. And it took years before anybody really took him serious. It was not the first year. It wasn't the second year. And first, he started coming to the house. He started talking to us about different things. And everybody was like, you know what? That sounds like it might be true. <laughs> and my aunt Dota, Dota Yatni Elzima, I knew her. She was the first one to go to the camp. She came home and she said, it's the truth. He's got the truth. He said, he said Dota said he got the truth. It must be true. <laughs> and then people started listening. You never know. So the creator is going to pick and choose who he wants to do a job. The thing is, you can be all against it or whatever you want to do, but you better pay attention. Because you never know when a prophet is going to visit you. Now who the creator is going to choose for his message. Look at all of us in here. I'm not saying everybody in here came from that man, from his words. But look at the numbers. Because, and we didn't reject it. Because the family could have kept on rejecting it because it was Micaiah. And he's nothing but a troublemaker. Which is what he was in the house. <laughs> he made more girls cry in the house than I can't remember. Who knew? That just goes to show you that, and whatever the spirit created put on him, it just goes to show you that you don't know, number one, who the, who the creator is going to choose. Yeah. And, and if he chooses you, you got to understand that if you're chosen, your best bet is to follow, even if it's not something you want to do. <laughs> if it's a good thing. Because that could be your destiny. Yeah. Imagine if he rejected his inclination to do this. Imagine if he rejected his inclination to do this because he don't, he doesn't want to worry about uh, ticking off his parents or being different mm -hmm. or losing his friends. Where would we all be right now? It's deep. <laughs> it's deep. And so when I read these portions. And I'm keep losing my spot. When I when I read these portions, I look way into it because it's not just about what happened to Saul. It's about what happens to every one of us in our lives and how the Creator works with us. The fact that you're in this room or that you chose to serve Him tells you that you are special. Yes. Yes. Amen. You are special, and you've been given an opportunity. You could have rejected it. The ones who he raised, they could have rejected it. They got old enough, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. It's too restrictive. I'm missing too many Friday night parties. So we all have an opportunity to accept this or reject it and, and determine our destiny by the choices we make, even though the Creator's given us opportunities. It's deep. And when he had made an inner proper sign, he came to the high place, verse 14. And Shaul's uncle said unto him and to his servants, Whither went ye? And he said to seek the company. Where you been? And when we saw that they were not found, we came to Shemuel. And Shaul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Shemuel said unto you. Because they all knew him. You had a conversation with the, with the, with the prophet? <laughs> and Shaul said unto his uncle, he told us plainly the, that the Kamonim were found. But concerning the matter of the kingdom, wherefore Shemuel spoke, he told him not. Because he wanted to follow the rules that whatever he gave him and, and, and told him when he was going to go down to Mithra, whatever the case was that he had to follow, he wanted to follow it before he said anything. Right. And let that come out 
in the big uh, reveal. And Shemuel called the people together unto Yah and took its spirit. And he said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith Yahweh Elohei Yisrael, I brought you up, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of their hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all the kingdoms that oppressed you. For ye have this day rejected your power, who himself saved you out of all of your calamities and your distresses. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourself before the Most High by your tribes and by your thousands. So Shemuel brought, brought all the tribes of Israel near, and the tribe of Benyamin was taken. Okay, so they're letting this whole thing go down like we don't know who the guy is. Right. So this, why, this is why uh, Shaul had to keep his peace because he had to wait to see how Samuel was going to make him known. Because if he just said, i just been anointed king, they would have laughed at him if they didn't stone him. Right. Okay, so he had to wait to hear it from the authority, all right, the person who had the authority to anoint him. See, some people don't know how to sit on information like that. You know what I'm saying? They go around, start spending the money that they think they got them, weighing or whatever the case might be, walking around like, I think I'll pick out three nasheen, you know, let's get this thing on the road, you know, let's get this party started, uh, you know. <laughs> I'll pick out my throne, oh, I need you to make me up a throne, brother. Uh, what you talking about a throne? You'll see. Don't worry. You know? Come on. You know how we do. We can't hold it. All right? So he sells his peace, and he still doesn't understand the realm. This is good. This is when he was listening. Okay? But, again, we have the choices that we make. Or well, everything is important. The slightest little thing you think, oh, that's just a minor little detail right there. No, that's the thing that's going to get you in trouble. Tom and he brought the tribe of Benjamin in by their families, and the family of the Matrites were taken. And Shaul, the son of Kish, was taken. But when they saw him, he could not be found. Okay, so Saul is an introvert. He started out as one anyway. He wasn't ready for all of this attention. He didn't want to be the center of attention. So he disappeared. He knew the party was getting started. He needed to be there. But he, I guess he said, if I'm really supposed, this is supposed to happen. Maybe he was all somewhere praying. I don't know. But they say he was hiding in the barn or something. Okay, so what I'm saying is maybe he just wanted uh, to make sure that this was what it was supposed to be and let the people know he had he had humility at this point. That's right. And it was it was definitely there to be seen. Time sheet. Therefore they asked of the most high further. Is there right. yet a man come hither? Is there is there anybody else that could be doing this? Because he's not here. But the Most High answered, Behold, he hath hid himself among the baggage. They ran and fetched him from thence, and when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upwards. You know, that could be important for Israel because if the guy was short, you know what they would have said, this little guy. <laughs> you know, they don't even care about the spirit or even, even like David, the courage. They're looking at, you know, is he a good representative? Okay. You understand? So they needed, they, they needed somebody tall. Okay. All right? Looked the part. Exactly. Looked the part. And Shemuel said to the people, See ye him whom the Most I have chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, Long live the king! Keep in mind, there's a lot of people that don't think he's a good choice. He might be tall, but yeah, they hate us. They don't want this guy to be running things. Uh, why not me? You know? This is something I learned over the course of time, just in Israel alone, especially in Israel. Those that's running to be leaders and get up here and do this job is not the right person. Usually, it's one that doesn't want it that has the skills and the humility to handle the job. Not all the time, because some people just want to serve. But if your object is just to get up there and be seen, because it's going to bring you some type of prestige, or some type of honor, or some type of special perks or whatever, then you're in it for the wrong reason. Then Shemuel told the people the manner of the kingdom, and wrote it in a book, and laid it before the Most High. And Shemuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Shaul also went to his house to Gabeah. 
And there, with, with him, the men of valor, whose hearts the Most High have touched. So what happened was, out of this event, the people, a lot of them, were of course ecstatic. This was great because this is what they wanted. And you had men who was like, wow, I could go, I could do this. And they all started, in other words, he and his secret service came into action right away. Mm -hmm. The men of valor was his secret servant. Mm -hmm. And all of them got on because they had to protect him. He's the king. They don't even know how to do a kingdom thing yet because they, <laughs> they don't know none of them. Well, they know because, listen, you don't sit around the Philistines and know what they're doing in the kingdom stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting calls. It's just it's off the chain. The new moon coming up. Okay, so um, a lot of people were excited, but again, the kingdom, they don't know how it's supposed to run. They got to get all of this stuff set up. I hate to bring them up, but 45 did not expect to win the presidency. Not, and when that happened, they were like, oh, shoot, we won. Yeah. What are we going to do now? Exactly. They were so caught off guard. It was pathetic. It was. it was pathetic what they were doing because their stuff was so raggedy. And yet, but they had the spot. They had those 90 days or whatever to figure it out. And they still weren't ready. Still not ready. They still not ready. <laughs> exactly. But this is kind of the same situation that's going on now. And then again, you have the haters who don't like who was chosen. And keep in mind, after this whole thing, they never, they're not going to have an ordination. They're not going to have a big ceremony. They're not going to have any of this until something goes down in the next chapter, right. which we're not going to cover today. But we're setting it up. So now, the, the last two lines. All right, so the last line is, But certain base fellows said, How huh? should this man save us? They despised him and brought him no present because he was as one that held his peace. He was, he was, he was a humble man. And they didn't like that. They wanted somebody, a rough guy, that was going to, I don't know, be, I don't know, nasty to them. I don't know what they expected, but this was not what they expected. And the creator had made the choice, and they didn't want to accept it. I'm going to end there. Y'all have a few minutes left to do some talking. And I have to try to deal with all of these phone calls and uh, all this other stuff. I thank you all for your time and attention. I thank you for the opportunity to stand before you. I pray that you got something out of my message. And he will bless you. Great, great, great. Go to the box. Come on. Come on. I got to get this phone call. Uh, hold up. So you get all right. The service for the incoming new moon of Avi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First of our month. Baruch Yehovah Tami, Baruch Yehovah Tosin Levana De Or Befol Antuminu. Thus saith Yehovah, who giveth the sun for a light by day, and the moon and the stars for a light by night. Yehovah of hosts is his name. If these ordinances depart from before me, saith Yehovah, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Praise Yahweh Israel on the renewing of the moon. His word stands, his creations remain. Amen. Let us sing the Shema. Shema.
hand. Gaze on the words of thy fingers, O God. What is his hand? Israel standing in thy mercies, Yahweh. In thy faithfulness do we live. Month unto month, I rejoice our days. Even as I rejoice the moon. Hallelujah. Let us sing the Shema. Shema. Thank <laughs> you. 
יען שומריך ישיל לך על יד ימיניך יומם השמש לא יקקה או יריח בלילה ישמורך יח מכל רע ישמור את נפשך ישמור גם את צאתך ובואיך מעצה רב עולם ברוך יד עולם אמן אמן give you thanks so yeah for the 121st psalm as we enter into not only even a new year, a week but also a new month oh, and a new God. year oh, yeah we ask that you guide us and protect us when we go out and when we come in oh yeah that even the sign of the new moon being found and, and celebrated around the world will be a sign of our, our redemption that we are getting closer and closer to a, a time of prophecy being fulfilled amen, amen. And even though, yeah, you would be merciful for us to have our sins forgiven as we enter into this new year and into this new week, oh yeah, and into this new day, that we would be able to think about how we can improve ourselves to be ready for Pesach, even spiritually as we are physically cleaning, oh yeah, all of the years of uh, accumulated bad habits that have allowed to fester and, and to ferment, oh yeah, please even allow us to master them, to conquer them, O oh Yah, and to reveal something new in this year to come, O oh Yah, for our good and for a blessing for us, O oh Yah. Please even be with those who are struggling and even suffering, O oh Yah, like our brother Earl, O oh Yah, even the friend of our sister Tanya, who was bit by a spider and is afflicted and hospitalized, O oh Yah, please strengthen him and heal him, O oh Yah. And you hear his prayers and you do indeed hear us calling out to you on his behalf, O oh Yah. We actually would be with all of those who have been traveling, those who are in New York, or oh Yah, worshiping him, and even allow us to see more unity in this year to come. Even as we prepare for our unity Shabbat, let there be a strength and connection between brotherhoods and sisterhoods across our diaspora. May it be your will that as we even celebrate 400 years of kind of progress in this nation towards this reawakening in the last century that we are your servants, the people of Israel, that this next century and even the 401st year of being in this country would be something that is a sign again of your glory and of positivity and of growth and maturity within all of our communities, oh God. May it be your will that we will be strong and of good courage, that we will not be frightened and afraid as we go boldly into yet another Hebrew year, oh God. Blessed be you, Yah, who has indeed brought us to another month, and who renews the months, the years, and the seasons. Blessed, O Yah, the Elohim of the people of Israel, forever and ever. Let us even pray in Hebrew. Baruch Yehovah Baruchet, Baruch Yehovah B'Sorayim, Baruch Yehovah B'Erev, Baruch Yehovah B'Laylam, Baruch Yehovah Yom Yom, Baruch Yehovah Tami, Yehovah Elohim, Baruch Yehovah Blessed be Yah in the morning, blessed be Yah in the afternoon, Blessed be Yah in the evening, and blessed be Yah at night. Blessed be Yah every day, and blessed be Yah always. Yehovah, our power, please forgive us for all evil things we have done. And be with us all this night, and all this month, and all this year. For thy name's sake, Yah, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Elohim of our fathers, and my Elohim. Hearken unto my voice, I pray the events please in thee. For thy name's sake. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let us sing the celebratory Shema. O Shema Yisrael,
time we even humble our hearts for the first Zirkat Kohanim, even for this week and for the month and for this year, by Kohen Eliyahu. Yevorek Pa Yehoah, we yishmereka. Kein yirasom. Yair Yehoah Panayu Aleka, we kuneka. Kein yirasom. Yisa Yehoah Panayu Aleka, we yasem leka, shalom. Kein yirasom. Yehoah bless thee and keep thee. Nayyam. Yehoah cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Nayyam. Yehoah lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Nayyam. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, let us even conclude the 150th song. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Shabbat Shalom. 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 Shabbat Shalom.